Bluegrass music was one of those genres forged in the fires of tradition, culture clashing, and invention. Bluegrass originated in southern Appalachia during the post-war 1940s and takes its name from Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, a Kentucky band formed in mid-World War II. Played acoustically, Bluegrass is well known for its unique use of the banjo, fiddle, mandolin, guitar, bass, and sometimes the harmonica. Historically, bluegrass has roots in Scottish, Protestant, and African traditions. Described by Bill Monroe as Scottish bagpipes and old-time fiddling, bluegrass is also infamous for its upbeat-driven sound. Musical historians consider bluegrass to be one of only two music genres that were created in America. The genre of bluegrass is the perfect microcosm of the larger melting pot that is the United States. Bluegrass combines the best of cultures from multiple continents, only to be perfected by American citizens into the music it is today. To paint a clear picture of the influences and originations of this culturally specific genre of music, we have to venture outside of America and look back through the past. To start, let's travel back hundreds of years to the British Isles. As many cultures do, cultures in the Celtic Isles and England had their own traditional music. The English played their ballads while the Scottish laid down their fiddle-based tunes. Both were filled with passion. They were dominated by family events and sometimes traditional folk events. Other common grounds they shared were tales of real life, death, hard times, and misery. These old-timey stories were relatable and most certainly made for the average human, not nobility. Thousands of miles away, on the continent of Africa, traditions that would eventually be transferred to America through the slave trade were ripe with music. Among this music was the banjar. The banjar would eventually evolve into the banjo, which would become the centerpiece of slave and Celtic traditions. Once early European settlers began living in southern Appalachia and the regions around it, the earlier pieces of the bluegrass puzzle took root. Celtic and English traditional music combined with Protestant music to further complicate the eventual genre. Throughout southern plantations, the banjar would lead traditional African folk stories over campfires at night. Even though they suffered from slavery, enslaved Africans fought to keep their culture alive by playing the songs with the instruments of their homeland. After the emancipation of slaves in the South and decades after the Civil War, Appalachians and Africans found themselves living in close proximity to each other. They still do today. They suffered from some of the same setbacks each other faced and were relegated to poverty by an uncaring capitalist populace. From the darkest of times, the lightest of lights can shine. So was the story of the beginning of bluegrass. With the banjo as the backbone, African traditional music combined with Celtic and English traditional music to form the unofficial beginning of bluegrass. Bluegrass is known for its heavy reliance on banjos and fiddles, two instruments that love to go fast and produce music to tap your feet to. Unique harmonies for multiple sources done in a cappella, instrumental duels, and lead instruments previously relegated to rhythm sections. Bluegrass was different. It could get your blood pumping or tug on the heartstrings. The pieces of bluegrass are simple, but can't be replaced. A bluegrass band needs stringed instruments, a handful of musicians, multiple harmonies, multiple instruments taking turns on the lead, and a passion for real stories of real people. Speed, lightning quick reflexes, technical precision, cohesion, diversity in both musicians and instruments, and soul-shaping lead vocals all contribute to the bluegrass sound. Bluegrass might be one of the most difficult genres of music to play due to its ever-changing speed without having to change tempo. Many banjoists talk about bluegrass having a drive to it that brings about the fast-paced sound. Studies have been done that show that drive is directly correlated to the banjo player's right hand and how it generates rhythmic patterns, unlike any other genre or instrument. These patterns often defy musical theory and only the most experienced banjoists perfect them. Often misnomered as folk music, Bluegrass is more of a branch of early country music enriched with folk traditions from black and white cultures. Bluegrass began down in the hollers and up on the mountaintops, so it has many of the unique qualities that folk does, but at the same time lends itself to modern ways of producing music. The fact that bluegrass can be played by non-professionals just as well as those who were instructed 
is part of the diversity of the genre. This contributes to the family aspect of bluegrass. It doesn't matter where you are, if you're enjoying bluegrass around other people, it gives, you, it gives you a sense of togetherness and family that few other genres even attempt to do. The people of bluegrass share in the music because they not only see themselves in the music, but their neighbors too. Everyone listens to bluegrass, or so it seems like it. Oftentimes you might not even know that you're listening to a bluegrass song. To generalize, Southern America, specifically Southern Appalachians, create and listen to bluegrass music the most. Oddly enough, bluegrass is a genre of music that both black and white Americans share experiences in, especially during the early 20th century. A beautiful aspect of bluegrass is that it is never divided. It brought people together. Both whites and blacks would join up and have their own bluegrass shindigs. They would sing and dance into the night, wading in the musical waters their ancestors brought together. What a beautiful sight it must have been. Sharing culture is one of the greater reasons to live on this planet. For those people during that time, they were a part of something special. Throughout the years, bluegrass allowed so many artists to express themselves and allowed so many songs to entertain. Here's a short list of bluegrass artists you need to know. Bill Monroe, Flatten Scruggs, Osborne Brothers, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Allison Krauss, and Trampled by Turtles. If you're in search of some songs to get your heart thumping, I've got you covered with this short list. Foggy Mountain Breakdown, Rocky Top, I'll Fly Away, Man of Constant Sorrow, East Tennessee Blues, Tennessee 1949, Dueling Banjos, and Nine Pound Hammer. Bluegrass is one of those traditional types of music that you can explain to someone, but they won't understand until they experience it for themselves. A beautiful sound for the amazing people who are characterized by its tales, bluegrass is uniquely Southern Appalachian music. That isn't to say it shouldn't be shared with the world. The reality is quite the opposite. I believe the country, and specifically, the descendants of Appalachians are reviving this traditional genre and turning it into the cultural music of their people. Modern bluegrass bands don't try to change the genre, but rather enhance it without straying from the defining principles that brought such a way of expressing ourselves to America in the first place.